So we're ready to jump into chapter 11. Chapter 11 is going to be our last chapter for the semester. Um, and so what we're going to do in chapter 11 is we're going to start talking about sequences. And chapter 11 is going to be about sequences and series. Okay, so series refer to uh, sum. So if you add up infinitely many numbers, do you always get infinity? Can you get any other numbers? And the answer is it depends on the terms that you add up, uh, are they going to zero? Um, clearly, if they're not going to zero, then you get infinity. But right? if you add one plus two plus one plus two over and over, they're just, the sum is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, so there's nothing to happen there. But more interestingly, you can think about an infinite series um, as a way of adding infinitely many numbers where you get a nice result at the end. And one example would be something that you're already familiar with, for example, would be something like pi, you could think of as 3 plus 1 tenth, right? It's 3.14, so 4 hundredths, and so on, right? And there's infinitely many numbers being added up. And the trick here is that the numbers that you're adding up are going to zero very rapidly, and it turns out that's enough to make the sum uh, a finite number. In this case, the more terms you add, the closer you get to pi. Okay, and so that's series. We'll talk about that in due time, and we'll talk about how to figure out whether the terms go to zero fast enough, and um, we'll get into that. That's what most of chapter 11 is going to be about. But before we get to series, we're going to concentrate on sequences. So 11.1 .1 is going to be all about sequences, and I want to make sure that we have a really good, firm understanding of everything sequences, because that's going to be really the basis for everything that we do in chapter 11. And so a sequence is just going to be an ordered list of, it, it doesn't have to be numbers, we're only going to work with numbers here, but a sequence can actually be an ordered list of sets, an ordered list of whatever, uh, but we're just going to work with ordered lists of numbers. Um, so for example, we could have the sequence n factorial, as n goes from 0 to infinity, and what this is going to be, it, let's actually work with a little easier sequence to start with, let's work with n squared. And so what this means is that we're looking at the sequence, which is an ordered list of numbers, so the order matters. And what we're going to do is we're going to think about what do we get when n is 0? So 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, and so on. Okay, so that's one sequence that we could talk about. This is the sequence of all the non-negative squares. Okay, so 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on. So that's one example of a sequence. And let's talk a little bit about the sequence notation. When I write n squared, as n goes from 0 to infinity, this is just to remind us. So I like to use the round parentheses to remind us that order matters. Oftentimes in math, when you see a set, it'll be numbers like 1, 4, 3. And that's the same as the set 1, 3, and 4. But with sequences, the order really matters. The, you could think of them kind of as ordered pairs or ordered, you know, triples. If we're thinking about uh, maybe a three-dimensional space. But if you take, like, if you think about a point x, y, and then you change the order from x, y to y, x, that changes what the point is, right? The order here matters. So because the order matters, I like to use parentheses instead of braces. Now, the notation here is important because this says that we're going to start at n equals zero and we're going to go uh, for forever. So for example, we could talk about the sequence uh, n squared starting at n equals 3. And in that case, this would be the same sequence. We just start at n equals 3. So it would be 9, 16, 25, and so on. Okay, so that starting point gives you the sequence. And there's no reason why these can't be finite, right? We could talk about the squares between 1 and 6. So this would be 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared. All right, and here's a sequence with exactly six values on it. Now, it turns out the interesting sequences are going to be the infinite ones, and that's what we'll talk about. Um, but that's sequences in a nutshell, okay? One sequence that comes up very frequently, especially in this chapter, is the factorial. So you may have seen this before. So an n exclamation point, that exclamation point is uh, a factorial. And what this is, is it's defined as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 1. So, for example, 5 factorial would be 
5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which happens to work out to 120. And for there's good reasons for this, uh, but 0 factorial is defined to be 1. Okay, so 0 factorial is 1, uh, 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2 times 1, so that's 2, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, so that's 3. Okay, so these are the factorials. So we could talk about the sequence n factorial, as n goes from 0 to infinity, and this would be 0 factorial, which is defined to be 1, 1 factorial, which is just 1, uh, 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, 3 times 2 times 1, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, okay, and then uh, this will keep going, okay, for as long as you want. All right, so that's the sequence of factorials there. So in a nutshell, that's all sequences are. Now, you can think of sequences, there's kind of a nice way to think about this in terms of uh, sequences here, but if you were to have something like, I think n squared is a good example, you can think of the sequence n squared as kind of being the values, let's just go from 0 to infinity. You, this is the numbers 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on, okay, that we talked about above. You could think of sequences as being functions, okay? So you can think of these as functions where your domain, the values that you're allowed to input, are just the integers from 0 to infinity, right? So you could think of them as functions where instead of writing um, a sub 0, you write f of 0, which is 0 squared, which is 0. And then the value a sub 1 would be f of 1, or 1 squared, or 1. Uh, a sub 2, the second value in the sequence would be f of 2, which is 2 squared or 4, and so on. And so, in general, what ends up happening is we talk about the sequence a sub n, as n goes from 0 to infinity. Oftentimes we start at 0, but you don't have to. You can start at whatever number you want. It could be 3, it could be negative 2, whatever. We're just going to start at 0. And this is the sequence a0, a1, a2, and so on. But you can think of these as functions where the inputs are just the, in this case, the integers from 0 to infinity, the integers greater than or equal to 0. So that's one good way to think of sequences, is really just functions where the domain is whatever the set of positive integers is that we're working with. Now, um, a few other things to say here about sequences. Okay, This will be kind of a longer section, and therefore I'll have to break this up into a few videos. Um, a few properties of sequences that I think are worth talking about. Um, the first is, if you have a sequence, a sub n, um, so a sub n is a kind of our general uh, form of a sequence, but if you have a sequence, so let me write this properly, if the sequence a sub n satisfies the following inequality, so if the sequence satisfies that a sub n plus 1 is greater than or equal to a sub n, uh, then we say that a sub n, the sequence, is increasing. Okay, so that's what an increasing sequence is. So, for example, the squares and the factorials are all increasing. Right, we go 0, 1, 4... 9, 16, and so on. Every time we get a new value in the sequence, it's larger than the previous values. Okay, so that's a sequence that's increasing. Um, one other part of this that I'm just going to write it as kind of its own separate thing, but it's not really separate. If you have a sequence, and the sequence does basically the same thing that we had before, except it's a strict inequality... Okay, so instead of saying that it's greater than or equal to, if it's just strictly greater than, okay, and that would include the things like the squares, but not the factorials, because with the factorials, the first two terms are actually equal. So the second, this term A, when I say second, what I really mean is the first term, and when I say this one, I really mean the zeroth, right? So I guess the right way to think about this would be A sub zero and A sub one. But anyways, the consecutive terms are not greater than one another. For the first two terms for the factorial, they're equal. And so, uh, if instead of saying that these types of sequences are increasing, we say that this sequence is strictly increasing. Okay, so strictly increasing. 
And that's just to emphasize that the inequality is strict. We're not allowing equality. And oftentimes you want to include strict increasing uh, in sequences so that you don't have to worry about sequences like 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, and so on, right? That's technically an increasing sequence because each of the values is greater than or equal to the previous value. Um, and so those are kind of the boring examples that you want to rule out. So that's that. Um, if the inequality goes the other way, we call the sequence decreasing. So I'm actually just going to copy uh, and paste here. So rather than making you watch me write this again, I'm just going to uh, copy and paste here. Um, and so if the sequence satisfies the inequality that a sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to a sub n, then we say that the sequence is decreasing. And if the inequality is strict, then it's strictly decreasing. Okay? And so a decreasing sequence, we haven't actually seen anything like that. But for example, uh, if we were to look at the sequence, say, uh, 1 over n, as n goes from 1 to infinity, this would be 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, and so on. That is a strictly decreasing sequence. Okay, so that sequence is strictly decreasing. Okay? And, um, yeah, that's really all I want to say about increasing, decreasing, and so on. One other bit of terminology that I think is important. Um, if a sequence a sub n... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. One, one thing before I do this. Um, if I look at the sequence that's, say, uh, 2, 1, 4, um, 7, 14, something like this. I'm just making up these numbers. Notice that this sequence is not an increasing sequence because you don't have that inequality for the first term. It's also not a decreasing sequence because... You don't have, um, it's not that each term is getting smaller after these. So it's neither increasing nor decreasing. And that's really all you can say. So this sequence is neither increasing nor decreasing. Okay, and the only sequences that are increasing and decreasing are the constant sequences, like the 4, 4, 4, 4, 4 that we talked about. Okay, so just one other example that I think is important to keep in the back of our mind is that not all sequences are increasing uh, or uh, decreasing necessarily. Um, if a sequence... Sometimes, uh, let me actually say this before I get into the next definition. Sometimes it's convenient to leave off the starting point because I don't actually care whether the sequence starts at 0 or 1 or 5 or negative 2. I don't care. So oftentimes we'll write a sequence just with these parentheses a sub n without the subscript and superscript. So if you have a sequence a sub n, and if the sequence is either increasing or decreasing, we have a name for that. So if the sequence is increasing or decreasing, uh, we call the sequence monotone. Okay, so we say that it's a monotone sequence. So monotone means that it just moves in a single direction. So it's either always going up or always going down. Okay? And if it's strictly increasing or strictly decreasing, we would say that that's strictly monotone. That means that the values um, are not just greater than or equal to the previous ones or less than or equal to the previous ones, but strictly greater. We don't allow the equality. Okay? So monotone just means it's basically a fancy word for increasing or decreasing. So that's the first characteristic of sequences. And then the last characteristic that I'll talk about in this video um, is going to be... Um, so we're going to talk about whether or not a sequence is bounded. Okay, so a sequence uh, a sub n is going to be bounded. Bounded basically means is that there's all the values fit in between um, two numbers. So say it's bounded between 2 and 5 or uh, negative 1 and 10. Um, and to say it a different way, a sequence is bounded uh, if there exists a number n, actually, let me call it m, so that all of the values, a sub n, are less than or equal to capital M, okay, for all n. So, for example, 
um, if we look at the sequence 1 over n, as n goes from 1 to infinity, this is a bounded sequence. So we had 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, and so on. And the reason why we know it's bounded is that uh, we can find a number. So notice that 1 over n is less than or equal to 1 in absolute value for all n. Okay, for all n greater than or equal to 1. And this all n greater than or equal to 1, I just did that because that's the starting value for the sequence. Um, and so the fact that we have this number here, that this is less than or equal to 1, makes us a bounded sequence. So the way I like to think about bounded sequences is that if you were to take a line, okay, you can think of a sequence as kind of a sequence of points. Um, I shouldn't use the word sequence of points, but as a collection of points, we're at 1, 1, at 2, you have a half, at 3, you have a third, and so on. So a sequence is bounded if all the outputs that you get are always between some upper and lower limit, right? some finite numbers. So that's what it means to be a bounded sequence. Uh, if you look at, say, the squares or the factorials, so n squared as n goes from 0 to infinity, uh, this is not bounded. There is no number where all these values in the sequence are less than that number. So think of the biggest number that you can think of. There are values in the sequence that are bigger than that number you just thought of. Okay, so that makes this an unbounded or not bounded uh, sequence. I should say unbounded. Okay, and so let's look at a few things here. So let's look at the sequence uh, negative 1 to the n over n as n goes from 1 to infinity. And so what this is going to be is it's going to be uh, negative 1, positive 1 half, negative 1 third, positive 1 fourth, and so on. And it turns out that this is bounded, but not monotone. Okay, so it's neither increasing nor decreasing because of the alternating pattern. Okay, so sometimes the numbers get bigger, sometimes they get smaller. Um, and, but it is bounded because all the values are less than or equal to 1. Uh, if you were to look at, say, uh, n squared, we already know that this is monotone and unbounded. So this is monotone because it's increasing. It's actually strictly monotone uh, and unbounded. If you were to look at the sequence... Uh, 1 over n squared, as n goes from 1 to infinity. This is 1, 1 fourth, 1 ninth, and so on. Okay, this is bounded and monotone. So this is bounded and monotone. Okay, so you can be neither bounded nor monotone. You can be both. You can be one, but not the other. If I want an example of something that's uh, neither bounded nor monotone, you could look at something like, um, uh, say, negative 2 to the n, as n goes from 0 to infinity. So the negative part is going to make the signs alternate. When you have an even exponent, you'll have a positive number. Um, and when you have an odd exponent, you'll have a negative number. And 2 to the 0 is 1. And then we get negative 2. 4, negative 8, 16, negative 32, and so on. And so this is neither bounded nor monotone. So it turns out you can have examples that are uh, any one of these categories. So bounded but not monotone, bounded and monotone, monotone but not bounded, or neither. Okay? Um, and so I think I'm going to end this part of the video for now. Okay, but so far we've talked about introductions to sequences and then whether a sequence is monotone and whether or not a sequence is bounded.